So I call my channel Room for Tools because I don't actually have any room for tools. No more room for that meatball grinder. I instead upgraded it to the Kalamazoo 1SM bench sander grinder. I think that's technical classification. I think it's a sander. Not entirely sure. Anyways, this bench sander came with a chintzy little stamped metal tool rest that I am really not very impressed with. I, I think I can do much better and I believe that this Tormek grinding post is just the right thing for the job. Tormek grinding they have all sorts of wonderful sharpening jigs and I figure for a post it'd be a lot easier to make my own jigs let's say for cold chisels or for nicely grinding center punches maybe drill bits I'll, I'll have to play around with it and figure out what I'll do in the future anyways let's get down to putting this thing together so I splurged and I got three quarter birch plywood I'm going to use my shoeless traveler. You can check out an earlier video I made on that. I use that for getting a really nice straight edge. Tape is on there to prevent splintering from coming up. Here is one side done and here's, 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 here's the other side. Uh, now let's take a look at how this finished. Whoa, not bad at all. Hmm, cool. Now that the odds of me chopping my fingers off have gone down, first thing seconds lay out some holes. Transfer punches are really, really handy to have for things like this. There's that done. Now just the motor. Get some fasteners from my stainless steel collection, no the less. Everybody who sees my drill press says, Oh, that's cute. <sighs> And then they hear it run and say, wow, that's like a German sewing machine. But I wouldn't know. i never heard a German sewing machine before. All I know is it's not size that matters, it's how often it pecks. Next is to drill some standoffs. I would have preferred aluminum, but eh, metal superstore was closed, so I'm using wood. Now I just gotta screw it together. These little elastomer feet, you can get them from Lee Valley. They're only 50, 60 cents each. They are really handy. Get yourself a whole bunch of them. Use them for replacing all sorts of feet for things all over the house. Anyways, I'm going to use a washer. And... Just got to screw it in. Ooh, why so standoffish? Sort of mech. Sweden, meet Middle America. You do make a fine looking couple. Okay, let's consummate this marriage or at least do a blood test and ensure this couple is compatible. Here's the tool guide, here's a tool rest. Pop it in. That is so much easier than the stock tool rest that comes with the sinder. That is so much easier. Wow. Okay, the jig is up. Knife jig, that is. This knife jig, you pre-adjust this little tiny nut. They're rather difficult to get your fingers in there. You pre-adjust it to be about the right size for the knife. Twist it down a bit and then tighten with the lock knob. The idea is to get the blade roughly parallel with the front of the jig. Now this jig is unfortunately not compatible with a belt sinder and the reason why is this platen is flat. This is made for the Tormek grinder which uses a round grindstone and in a round grindstone the stone arcs away from the blade and gets away from the jig itself. This, this little nubbin of a screw here, or the, the head of the screw, it pretty much limits the, the, the smallest angle you can get on a blade is maybe around 15 degrees. And it's not ideal. And even if 15 degrees was acceptable to you, there's an additional problem with this grinder in particular 
you put the jig up along the grinding bar and you slide it along the belt. The belt would be there, but it hits the motor. So, this and this and this don't work. But the good news is that this bar makes freehand sanding of knives really, really easy with this belt sander. The benefit of a belt sander is that you can use any belt with it. You could use a standard belt like this, and you can even, like, I don't know if you want to, you can even, like, sand wood with it if you want to, if that's your game. Or you can go to an actual sharpening belt, such as this 3M try something, 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 or I don't know what it is. It's three times better than something. It's very shiny. Uh, yeah, you could put on any belt. You could even put on, you could even put on leather. This is a leather belt. Put this on and there's no strop in what you can do. So belt changes with the signer are really easy. You just put it on the top, pull you lower down the spring action. And there you go. Release. Check for straightness. Yeah, that's about right. Run it just a bit. Looks good. Now let me show you how to do freehand sharpening using this bar. Just hold the knife like so, put it up on like that, and you have really fine control of the angle. Let's give it a shot. And with some more dicking around off camera, it was pretty easy to get a very nice and even grind. A quick touch up with the strop and yeehaw. Next up we have the Tormek square blade jig. And once again, it doesn't really work very well with the belt slinder for the same reasons as the knife jig. Let me d demonstrate it. First of all, it's a really cool jig though. It has these neat little stops that you can put on the bar and that way you can limit the travel of your jig. And here's an end stop that just screws onto the end of the bar and prevents it from falling off. So you take your jig and you take your blade that you want to sharpen. Here's a planer blade, a hand plane blade, and you stick it in. These Veritas blades, notice that they're tapered at the end. This jig wants a, a flat for registering, which makes these Veritas blades a little bit more challenging to get nice and square. And that, that, that's nowhere near square, and maybe it's getting a little bit better now. You tighten it down, and that's not square whatsoever. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, that's okay. Uh, you tighten it down like so, and you pop it onto the... onto your sharpening bar. The Tormek column bar, whatever the heck you want to call it. And again, the problem is to get this jig close enough to the sanding bar, these rear protuberances are either getting in the way of the, 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 the belt or they're getting in the way of the motor. I figure with a planar blade like this at about maximum extension, the best that you can hope for is maybe a 35 degree angle and you're not going to get anything more acute than that. I will not be getting rid of my flat stones and my manual sharpening jigs for my carbohydrate tools. So to conclude, I like this thing. You, you know it's going to be hit or miss when you use the Tormek jigs. A lot of them I suspect are not going to work. The, the knife jig and the 
the square blade jig definitely do not work with this system but you know this table just on its own with this bar and its adjustability that is that's worth the price of admission in my opinion and in addition to this i do figure that i will be able to make my own jigs as needed all i need to do is take little scrap pieces of aluminum such as this one here drill a hole in the end and i'll be able to support any manner of tools for instance i can do center punches and i got to make some sort of a rotation system i can get a nice consistent grind angle cold chisels for instance as well get those really nice you can use limiting stops on the bar to get exactly the right the right amount of travel I'm happy with it. The drill jig that Tormek makes makes the coveted four-faceted drill point which I want to replicate. I think it might be compatible with this. I'm not sure. The thing is that the drill sharpening attachment, all it needs to do is mount on the bar and it employs its own slider system. I think think that it would work now the only thing i need to work on is how to do friggin carbide with belts which well as far as i know it, it, it you can't do it anyways thanks for watching i hope that you enjoyed this little video remember that i don't have a lot of room for tools but i got room for this tool bye bye